bikes have come a long way since 1816. Back then, a German baron made the first one that could steer, although it still didn't have any pedals. But as the design improved, its popularity soared. In the UK today, we buy over 2 million bikes every year, and over half of them are mountain bikes. A state-of-the-art mountain bike starts life as a pile of aluminium tubes. This manufacturer makes bikes to order, so each frame can be customised to the measurements of its future owner. First, the tubes are cut down to size with a circular saw. ends are slightly flattened. This makes them stronger and more durable. Then it's clamped in a vise where it's drilled with a circular bit the same size as the tube to which it'll be connected. It's accurate to a tenth of a millimetre which ensures that the frame will fit together perfectly. Once all the tubes have been cut and drilled, the frame is assembled on a jig bench, held into shape by brackets. Then they can weld it together. A steel welding rod is heated and becomes molten at the point of contact. It forms an incredibly strong bond that will help the bike endure the huge stresses that will be exerted on it. One by one, the tubes are joined to form a solid frame. It's incredibly sturdy despite the fact that it only weighs a touch over one and a quarter kilos, just a bit heavier than a bag of sugar. Back at the jig bench, they check it still fits the template, as sometimes the welding can cause distortion. Each tube has to fit to the millimeter. This frame's slightly out, but it can be forced into shape with a bit of gentle persuasion. Once it's perfectly aligned, it's baked in an industrial oven for 24 hours at 180 degrees Celsius. This causes the steel to harden and the tubes become virtually inseparable. Next, the frame surface is treated in this airtight blue unit. The process works in much the same way as sandblasting. A gun sprays tiny particles of glass onto the frame and removes any residues which are lurking on the surface. The before and after effect clearly shows the benefit of the process. Once it's been cleaned up, the frame's hung on a hook that connects it to an electric current. The spray gun charges the paint particles to the opposite polarity, and this causes the frame to attract the paint like a magnet attracts iron filings. They mask off some areas with tape, and then they can spray on the second coat of paint. Any excess is carefully blasted away with compressed air. The frame will go back into the oven for a further 20 minutes, and this will fix the varnish to ensure a lasting shine. After it's been baked, they add some finishing touches and it's ready to be attached to the rest of the bike. The rear forks are first. They've got an inbuilt suspension system with a hinged mechanism. A 
a shock absorber is added, which will make for a smoother ride and protect the biker from injury on rough terrains. The front forks and handlebars are fitted, and the wheels come next. They've got disc brakes, which are more reliable than caliper brakes that wear easily and can fail in wet weather. A derailleur is fitted at the back. It's a mechanism that moves the chain onto different cogs to change gears. Fit air threads on a cable that connects to the derailleur and checks it's all working smoothly. Finally, the pedals are added. They're designed like a ski binding so that the rider can snap his shoes in and out with the minimum of fuss. From start to finish, the mountain bikes have been assembled by hand, just like the first bikes nearly 200 years ago. But these ones have been crafted from lightweight aluminium tubing, fitted with hinged forks, and they've got pedals.